Hello, seventh grade. I am doing a follow-up lesson to how to draw animals from the basics. Um, we talked about the parts of the body, just like on a human, you have an oval, the neck, the head, and you have the thigh muscle where your leg would rotate from your hip, I guess. And then you have the leg and the paw. This is gonna scoop up this way. Nose is gonna come out and around. Okay, basic cat. That one's kind of arching its back. It looks kind of angry, but anyway. So how to pose the body then? You have to kind of think about what the different parts of the body would be doing. And then you have to think about your perspective. If you remember from art class, what perspective is, it's the where you're viewing the body from. So if this is the main part of the body and your cat is lying down, you're going to see one of the hips, the, you know, the upper leg, and then you might see the lower part of the leg. If the tail is curled around, it's going to curl in front of that. So you have to think about your layers. This would be the layer that's closest to me in the foreground, and then your middle ground, and then the background. So with the shoulder, the paw might be come up front here. If their head is laying on their other paw, you're probably not going to see the neck if the cat's laying down, but the ears are going to be even. Okay. And you've got your nose and your eyes and stuff on the side of the head. Okay. <clears throat> if your cat is sitting down, then your things are a little bit more stretched out. You've got the head, you've got a neck, you've got the body. Okay. You got a leg on each side. So your body's going to come down. And then that foot's going to come forward or kind of out to the side a little bit. But you've also got the front legs, and the front legs are going to come down in the center. Have a paw. Okay, and those are going to maybe overlap the back part of the legs. So this is where their bottom's sitting on the ground. So you just have to think about what those body parts would be doing and which part of the body is going to be in the front where you're going to see it the most. And then, you know, figure out where things are. Now you have some positions, and again, I, I encourage you in the first video to look up a picture and draw from a live picture of a real live cat. Um, some some poses are more awkward. If the cat is like turning around looking at you, then their body may be turned to the side. And if you just look at the outline of that shape, it looks awkward and weird, but you still have, you know, this is the back and then the, the cat's hip is going to come down. Its leg is tucked around there. The other legs are on the other side of the body, so you don't see them. You might not even see the paws because the tail and the back leg are wrapped around the paw. You're going to have one ear that's closer to you and one ear that's on the on the back side. Cats are kind of my favorite one to experiment and play around with because they're an easier animal or they're a more common animal. A lot of people have cats and we've seen cats in movies and things like that. So um, other animals are a little bit more difficult to deal with, but they all work on that same basis of circles and ovals and overlapping and figuring out what's in front. Things that are in front should be lower in the picture. This is closer to me. This is in the middle ground. This The, the bottom is sitting on the ground and it's further away. So you have foreground, middle ground, background. Okay, so you're always looking at the different layers. Um, if you want your cat to look realistic as you start to move past just the, the body parts, then you need to remember your shading. Um, if you have something that's a cylinder, it's going to be darker on the outside edge and lighter in the middle. And when you start adding that shading, it kind of gives the illusion that your object is three-dimensional. 
and, and realistic. There would be a shadow underneath the cat's chin, and that's what pushes the neck back in space and brings the face forward so that it looks like it's closer to you when you when you add that shading. Um, you know, the, the legs are cylinders. It doesn't take much shading. If it's a light-colored cat, you just do a little bit, and it gives an illusion that it's a three-dimensional object, making it look much more realistic. Okay, this part is further back, so it's gonna be darker because it's gonna be in shadow. Yes, it's still there, but, okay. A little bit of shadow on the outside edge of the leg just gives it the illusion that it's 3D. If one thing is over the top of another thing, it's gonna have a little bit of a shadow cast on it. Getting real fancy now. But as you can see, this is your value scale that you learned in sixth grade. That little bit can make a big difference. I don't know what happened with my <laughs> head of my cat here. It looks funny, but. And you can add little details. If your picture is big enough, you might be able to see the paws or his claws might be out. Maybe he has a white foot, a white tip to his tail. Make it darker inside his ears, make it look a little 3D. His ears crooked. Anyway, you guys get the idea. A little bit of shading can go a long way. You can use colored pencils if you remember with colored pencils. You're still doing a value scale or you can blend your colored pencils. You can use find a light, a medium, and a dark color like yellow, yellow, orange, and orange or yellow, orange, and red. You can use your textures that we learned to give your cat stripes. A little bit of a hatching line here. If you make your hatch, if you make your lines straight, it's going to flatten your object. If you curve your lines just a little bit, it's going to make him look rounded instead of flat surface. Anytime you make straight lines on a on a round object, it's going to flatten it back out. So you kind of have to curve your lines to go around the body. <laughs> Hatching lines, scumbling is the loopy loops. That would be a good one for some kinds of fur or like manes and tails. Okay, and there's your, your animals with a 3D form and in different poses. He needs another eye.